Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do our September word art featuring the seasonal flower, the blue aster. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so we're starting off with a, a three sides of the rectangle, uh, four inches by three and a half inches, quite a sort of blocky rectangle. And um, then I'm gonna take a compass and I'm going to just create a nice arch over the top. If you didn't have a compass, you could um, use sort of half a, a round thing to draw around. I find a like a sellotape roll or something like that's really good. And yeah, that's going to be our shape to uh, do our little painting in. So what I want to do is I want to have like a, a cluster of flowers sort of bursting out. So we'll have some sort of inside and others just sort of coming out so I'm having a little sort of think about the the branches or the stems even I think that's kind of good and we'll have a, a few circles drawn so I always like to paint in or draw in these little circles or ovals um, before well, I actually paint in a flower because the circle or the oval just really helps anchor all the petals in place before we get started. Um, and it's so cool because today we're painting an aster which is a new flower for me, I've never painted it before. And um, it's a really lovely simple flower to be honest, it's just your real basic petal shape, nice sort of slender petals, a bit like a daisy if you've not seen one before. And um, the other really cool thing is I've actually managed to get the September word art <laughs> um, filmed and edited and out before we've got into September, which is a, a, a new achievement for me. Um, but the first thing we're going to do, as we do with all our vignettes, is we're going to just paint in a lovely pale wash across the actual shape, this curved rectangle. Uh, so that we've got a really lovely pale background when we rub out the pencil. Now the blue aster is a purpley flower so to contrast that I want to use uh, a mixture of yellow ochre and cadmium orange. I've got my size 8 brush but to be honest I think you could go even larger. But I'm just going to fill in the entire shape with this very pale wash working nice and fast to get it all painted in in a nice smooth wash. So you can see I'm sort of adding a bit of water once I've got a bit of colour. And then just painting it all in. Okay, the uh, arch is dry and I've mixed up some cobalt blue, uh, cobalt violet and some Prussian blue to make a sort of indigo-y, purpley petal mix. It's quite dilute and I've got my size zero brush here and I'm just going to start um, by painting in some petals. So I'll, I'll start with this one up here that's slightly oval and I what I want to do is, is be sort of reflecting the way the petals kind of fan out. They, they curl up a little bit, but they're quite random. I don't want this to be too perfect in terms of the petals, but they're quite slender. And then they're going to sort of cup right sort of down to the bottom edge of that oval there. And then from here, they're going to really sort of shorten And that gives us a lovely sort of oval, um, sort of, yeah, three quarters open flower. So let's do another one of those. So I think it's always easier to begin with the petals at the back. Just get them nice and long. Just imagine them fanning out from the base of the oval, just there. That's why we draw in these uh, central nucleus shapes 
for the flower just to really help us when we're painting them and then sort of shorten these out a bit. Okay, so we're just going to fill up our page. There might be some that are a little bit more sort of open faced to the page. But on the whole, these aster flowers do sort of face up to the sun. So we're going to try that just gentle sense of the curve, the curve upwards. And as you can see, I'm being really quite casual with the way I'm painting these petals. They're probably the most sort of loose and casual I've been with all sorts of flower painting. Um, but it just it just really gives them the right kind of character. This one's a good one because the oval is is really quite squashed, so you can see how the petals really do almost come to nothing at the base. Now the center of an aster is an, a lovely big orange pom-pom, but orange and purple they're uh, sort of opposite sides of the colour wheel so I'm making sure that this sort of blue purpley indigo colour that I'm using is nice and dilute so that they're not going to be really fighting each other when it comes to putting in that purple uh, put, putting in the orange centre. Now you also might be wondering well it's called word art but where on earth is the word art well it's going to be coming in we're going to write it in in a nice little curve there and um, the other thing is you do get the odd sort of wayward petal so don't be scared of just popping in one that's sort of curving down it's quite fun like that so we're just going to fill them up and then move on to the next stage i placed in a few more that just uh look like they're sort of in behind the arch which just helps fill up the space there and just creates a bit more impact of the ones that have actually sort of come outside of the shape. Now whilst those dry I just need to mix up some yellowy orange for our centres of the flowers. So I've got some cadmium orange there just mixing it in my palette well out of shot and I've got some cadmium yellow those two will be fantastic for the very cheerful pom-pom centers of these flowers but also I've got it mixed up because I've got one or two little shapes here left and I'm just going to change my water over what I want to do is paint in a few of the, the sort of bud flowers that haven't quite opened so what I'm going to begin with is start with a few little petals they're just sort of opening up and I've just cleaned my brush off and I'm just going to sort of bring them down a little bit into the shape and then I'm going to take a little bit of my yellowy orange mix and we're just going to have a few dashes of that and it's just going to sort of touch just start to slowly blend but as long as I don't sort of dabble about with the brush too much that will just be a really nice simple blend and won't go too muddy so whilst those dry we can start to fill in our rest of our flowers so you need to make sure the petals are dry I can see one or two aren't dry yet but these ones up here are and it's a lovely sort of pom-pom shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sort of dots of the brush to just create that central circle and then fill it in with lots of little dabs some will join up some won't but that's fine so this is a mixture of cadmium orange and cadmium yellow and so I start with the base Lots of little dots. I'm still using my size zero brush here and then we'll just bring it up over those petals up there and so this is why it was very important to make sure that you paint your petals in 
nice and dilute. I've now got um, my Riga brush and some sap green to start to add in a few stems. Um, I'm just sort of joining them where I where I see fit. Um, there we go. And then we can add in some leaves, some sepals, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take my small four tenths brush and first off with the little brush, I'm going to add in some little sort of tapered lines to just create the little cup of sepals underneath these more bud flowers. And then we've got the little, little leaves here and there. Um, and I'm going to use a slightly large brush, size zero, just to give us a bit more um, a bit more on the brush because you can see the leaves actually are not that tiny and I'm just looking for places uh, sort of in the composition but also on the stems there usually is a little leaf at each junction And the other thing is sometimes of a flower that's really quite sort of open faced, you might just see a tiny bit of the, the little cup that's sort of underneath it. So if there are any like gaps like that or funny areas where the stems are coming up and they don't look too good, we can just neaten that off with a, a leaf here or there. And then of course we can have a leaf that maybe sort of launches out somewhere. What about one coming out there? Maybe an extra little stem if we haven't. There we go. We have a little leaf there as well. So just keep thinking about the composition as a whole. And uh, yeah, just keep building it up. You could always, if you wanted, add in a few little other buds that haven't even properly opened up yet. Just to, we're just sort of filling the gaps where we where we can find little spaces. I'm now taking a slightly more concentrated bit of cobalt violet and just adding a few little lines to the petals just where they come out from the center and it just helps uh, give the flower just a little bit more detail it doesn't have to be every single one but you'll notice the difference and you may have when you painted them in initially some of them might have sort of bled together and this is just a really helpful way to define them a bit more. Time for highlights and lowlights. So I've got some fairly concentrated cadmium yellow, which I can now just add a little bit to the sort of top half of the centers there. 
I'm not too worried about it, you know, showing up massively, but that little thick bit of cadmium yellow can make a lovely highlight and just add a bit more texture. And then in terms of low lights, I have added a very little bit of sap green mixed with French ultramarine blue just here to some of the leaves and just a few of the little sepals and buds. Yeah, looks great. I'm really happy with that. So the last thing to do is actually put in this this word art that we've we've talked about so much. Um, so what I want to do is write in September just in like quite small lettering there. So what we could do is just sort of get a get a curve going. So I'm going to make my compass a bit smaller, and I'm just going to drawing in pencil just a sort of guide curve which will sort of help and then I can write in September in pencil but I'm just going to wait for this to dry fully first. So I've mixed up some Payne's Grey and Mars Black and I'm just using my four tenths brush um, having drawn in a rough pencil guide but I find until you're actually painting it you sort of don't completely settle on where your letters are going to go until they're being painted on. Um, but this is the joy of the word art project is it's so different each month isn't it? And really what we're doing is we're celebrating seasonal flowers. Um, so yeah that is the piece all done so we just need to wait for that to dry 100% give it a good rub out in pencil and then we'll have our word art so there we are all rubbed out and that is your September word art thanks so much for watching I hope that's got you ready for autumn gosh it's coming soon isn't it um, I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy and if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one and if you're sharing your work on social media tag us at the Winton paper co on Instagram and if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you next time. Bye!